Hey, how you doing? My name's Elton, I'm a Docker captain, and I'm going to show you how to use swarm mode in Docker 112. If you're new to the idea, a Docker swarm is a cluster of machines, all running Docker, which provide a scalable and reliable platform to run many containers. If you're not new to the idea, you'll know that you've been able to create a swarm for quite a while now, but it's been a separate product, and it needed a fair amount of setup and quite a few moving parts to get it working. Now, in Docker 1.12, the Swarm functionality is built into the Docker engine, so you don't need to run any additional software to have your machines work together as a Swarm. Now, you just need Docker running on a bunch of machines, and then it's amazingly easy to convert those separate machines into Swarm mode and get a whole lot of extra functionality. I'll dive into a demo showing you that in just a moment, but before I do, these are the only prerequisites for running a Docker Swarm from version 1.12 and higher. You need some machines running Docker, all in the same subnet so they can reach each other, and with these ports open so that they can communicate, 2377, 4789, and 7946. I've already created my setup with four virtual machines in a virtual network. These are Ubuntu Server 1604 VMs running in the Azure cloud, but you can use anything that can run Docker. I created the VNet and the VMs using the Azure command line interface, and you can find the details of that on my GitHub repo, Six-Eyed Docker Swarm Walkthrough. The VMs just use the Ubuntu base image, and I've run this command to install the latest test version of Docker. These machines are all running Docker 1.12, but at the moment, they're just four separate VMs running Docker. Now, I'm going to make them into a swarm with just two commands. So I'll log into the first box called Docker Swarm 00, and I'll show you that it's running Docker version 112. And actually, this is RC2. To create the swarm, I'll need the local IP address on the subnet, which is 10.0.4. Now, I'll create the swarm with Docker Swarm init passing the address of the machine and the port to listen on. Okay, so there's no trickery here with speeded up video, that really did just take one second. And now I have a swarm. I can run a new command, docker node list, and that lists all the nodes in the swarm. Currently there's just one, swarm 00, which is active and it's the swarm manager. So what just happened? When I ran swarm init, docker created the swarm. Every swarm has to have at least one manager, and the node that first initializes the swarm becomes the first manager. That listen address flag tells the manager which IP address and port to use for swarm communication, and port 2377 is the default. Okay, creating the swarm was pretty simple, and now I'll scale it up by adding in the other VMs. I'll connect to swarm 01, and here I just need to run docker swarm join 10.0.4.2377. That's done in a second again, and it tells me that this node has joined the swarm as a worker. Because this isn't a manager node, I can't run the swarm admin commands here, they only work on the manager. So back to swarm 00, when I run docker node list, I now have two nodes, both active, although only one is a manager. So what happened there? When I ran swarm join, the node checked for a manager running at the address I gave, and it found one, applied to join the swarm and was accepted. That really is it. Now I have a swarm running with two nodes, and in Docker 1.12, the swarm has service discovery built in. So any containers that I run will be able to reach other containers. And we'll see why that's important in just a moment. I'll fill up my swarm with the other nodes, so I'll connect to swarm 02 and run the same swarm join command with the manager address. And then do the same with swarm 03. Now back to the manager on swarm 00, I'll list out the nodes again, and now I have four, the one manager and three workers. My swarm's looking good now, so let's run some containers and see how it works. The Swarm manages individual containers on the nodes for us, 
and we work at a higher level with a new concept called services. A service is an abstraction that says, I want to run this type of container, but I'm not going to start and manage the individual instances. I want the swarm to do that for me. So I'll create a really simple service back on the manager node with docker service create, give it a name, an image, and some parameters to pass to the image. That's saying I want a container based off the Alpine base image and pass the ping command to the startup, which will start the container pinging the manager VM. I can list all the running services on the swarm with docker service list and check how many instances of one service are running with docker service tasks and the name of the service. That tells me I have a single task, which means one single instance of the container and it's running on Swarm02. So let's connect to that node, and I'll run good old docker ps to see what's running. And sure enough, there's my Alpine container with the ping command. I can run docker logs with the follow argument to see the output, and here are all the ping results, which show that this container can reach the host machine for the manager node. This is a normal Docker container, and these are the normal Docker commands. So if I want to find out the internal name of the container, I can run docker exec hostname and see that the hostname is the same as the container ID. With Docker Swarm, we now have built-in discoverability. And let's think about that for a second. In the new Swarm mode, containers can reach other hosts by their domain name. That's dynamic so they can do that even if nodes join after the container was started. And nodes can also reach containers running on other nodes. Every container is able to reach every other container, which is massively powerful. And we don't have to do anything to make that happen. With the old swarm, you'd need console or etcd running in the swarm, and maybe a container with a DNS service too, or maybe a load balancer with nginx and interlock. But in the new swarm, it's all built in, right out of the box. This is called the routing mesh, it does discovery, and it also does load balancing within the swarm. Let's finish up with a look at that in action. I'll get rid of my ping service with service RM, and that will remove all the running tasks, and I'll go on to create something more useful, a really cool website, which you can run yourself from my image on the Docker Hub. I'm telling Docker Swarm to publish port 80, in the same way that you normally would do with docker run. I can inspect the service to get some details, which confirms the port and the number of tasks running, which are called replicas in a swarm service. If I check the tasks, I have one instance running, which happens to be on swarm 00, so containers can run on the manager as well as the workers. Okay, so here's where it gets exciting. All my Azure VMs have a public IP address set up, so I can browse to Swarm00 where the container is running, and here we go. Here's my awesome website, running directly from the container on that node. But check this out, I'll browse to Swarm01 instead, which doesn't have the container running, and I still get the response. So how's that? Node01 got the request, but the Swarm knows it isn't running a task, which can handle a request on port 80. So it routes the request to node 00 instead, but that all happens silently and transparently. And it's the same with all the nodes in the swarm. So if I make the request to 02 or 03, I still get the response sent by 00. That is pretty cool, but I'm not quite done yet. On my Azure subnet, I also have a load balancer set up, which has its own public IP address. So I can browse to that URL and I'll still see the site. Every time I refresh, Azure will be sending that request to any VM in the subnet. And if it lands on a node which isn't running the service, the Swarm intelligently reroutes the request to another node. In a production environment, I'd have my domain name pointing at the public facing load balancer, which distributes traffic among my Swarm nodes, knowing that the Swarm itself takes care of rerouting requests to the correct node. In production though, I wouldn't only have one task running. The whole point of Swarm is scale and reliability. So let's have a look at scale. 
With the service update command, I can spin up new instances with the replicas flag. So let's scale up to 10 instances of my website. I've got 10 tasks running now, distributed around the nodes. Switch back to the website and hit refresh a few times, and it's the same experience, but now any node can handle the request by itself as they're all running instances of the container. And the last thing, what about reliability? What happens if a node goes down? I'll connect to Swarm03 and simulate a failure by shutting down the VM. All the nodes in a swarm are constantly sending heartbeats so the manager will quickly know that this node is offline. The node list command tells me straight away that swarm03 is down. But if I check the service, I've still got 10 tasks. When we lost node03, the service lost some of its replicas, going below the required setting of 10. So the manager scheduled new tasks on the remaining nodes to bring the replica count back up to 10 and keep the service running as specified. Back to the website again and refresh a few times and it's working just as before. Okay, that's me done. In this short walkthrough, we've seen a lot of what clustering looks like with Docker Swarm mode built into the Docker engine from version 1.12. To run a swarm, you just need some machines running Docker 112 or higher, which can talk to each other. Then you run swarm init on one of the nodes to create the swarm, and that node becomes the manager. Run swarm join on all the other nodes, and now you have a cluster of machines all working together. You schedule work on the swarm by creating services, specifying the scale requirements with the replicas flag and the Swarm will spin up containers and monitor them to make sure the service has the right number of tasks even when nodes fail. And when you have services distributed across the Swarm, the routing mesh intelligently routes traffic to the right nodes where tasks are running, so you get free load balancing in the cluster. My name's Elton, I hope this was useful, and you'll find me on Twitter at Elton Stoneman if you want to hear more from me.